thanks to everybody for joining us today. Uh, I'm Abby Block. I'm the grant coordinator here at the city. Uh, started in the nonprofit sector and uh, made the conversion about a year ago. Um, I'm here today with the new mayor, Ryan Sorensen, and our city administrator, Todd Wolf, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Well, thanks, Abby, for having us today. Like Abby said, my name is Ryan Sorensen. I'm the, the new mayor. It's going to be a month tomorrow. Um, and before that, uh, I was on the city council for four years and served as the council president last year as well. I'm Todd Wolf. Uh, I've been the city administrator since uh, July of last year. And I was a council president for four years before that and an older provider. So that's uh, a little bit of my background, other than I worked in the private sector and ran companies. Well, I guess to start out with, I'm going to actually start with a submitted question um, that asks a little bit about what you do here at the city, the differences between you and your, and your roles. Um, when and how you work together, and who people should invite if they're having like a ribbon cutting or some type of ceremony, if it should be one or both of you, and uh, who the con point of contact should be. So that's like 10 questions in one, but. Right on. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that, that's a good question. I think we get it, get it kind of often about, oh, you know, why is there a mayor and a city administrator? What, you know, what do you do? Who does what sort of thing? And um, we're still, I would say, relatively in, in the infancy of, of it. Um, Todd's the third city administrator, I believe, and I'm the 59th mayor. Um, so it's, it's, it's still kind of a new, new concept. But um, Todd and I, I think have a great working relationship in terms of, of how we're kind of meeting the goals and tasks of, of, of the city. Um, you know, Todd and I kind of, you know, sat down kind of on the onset of, of my transition and kind of talked about, you know, okay, what's, what's kind of the wheelhouse do we all play in essentially? And, you know, it's, it's kind of like a CEO role, COO sort of role. And you know, my, my primary focus is on a lot of external relation, uh, external relationship, public relations sort of components of, of the function of the mayor. And the mayor oversees the, the government type of entities, chairs the council meetings, um, contacts federal and state, state agencies as well. Um, but there's a lot of partnership uh, that, that Todd and I do um, in our roles as well. And it, it's been going good. You know, we're, we're in touch every single day when we're in the office talking about different priorities and different projects that we're working on. Um, we both bring different, um, different skill sets to, to, to the city hall, which is, which is really beneficial for, for, for all of us. So um, for ribbon cuttings, I guess, invite us both. They're fun. We're, yeah. we're, we're you know, it's we're more the merrier. Yeah, we, uh, as a city administrator and even prior when Ryan and I were uh, council presidents, you know, we tended the ribbon cuttings and, and uh, events to represent the city. That's the biggest thing is we need to be uh, the voice for the city. Um, you know, if, if, if uh, the mayor can't make it, then obviously I would be there and, and vice versa. But uh, we do have a great collaboration and communication together. I think we bring a lot of energy to the city. Uh, obviously with my background, I look at the city as a business, as I've said, we are really making some great strides in efficiencies and improvements and processes and separations. And again, we're, we're taking the city to a, a new level and uh, we're bringing you know, business into it. And what I mean by business is running it like as if it's for profit. You know, we, we have to be good stewards and we need to grow our city. And there's so many deficiencies that we need to work with our constituents to, to really put some resources to it. So together we're gonna really increase that communication between the, the, uh, our citizens and the city and, and focus the right energy in the right direction. Yeah, I think, um, you know, although we're called nonprofits in the nonprofit sector, I think it's a similar, um, having that concept of, no, you really do have to earn enough revenue to pay your bills and do all these things. Same for the city. Um, okay. so. You both said you're relatively new in your roles. Can you talk a little bit about coming into City Hall with fresh eyes and some of the things that you've found that were maybe surprising or weren't at all like you thought they would be? All right, I'll take that one first since I have the seniority in this right here. Um, for me, it was, it was very eye-opening. Uh, as a past council president, I thought and I believed at the time that I had a lot of interaction with the city and the operations and the day-to-day, -day, but I, I realized that I didn't. And coming in, um, especially with my, my business and operations background, I really started to see a lot of things that, it's not that they weren't functioning, they were getting by. And the thing is, when you're in municipality, and this is what I've learned from other municipalities and different groups that I'm now part of, 
is that municipalities don't tend to look outside other than to other municipalities. So if you're following the person in front of you, you are following the person in front of you. You're not ever looking around them and seeing what's coming or, or taking a different path. Being that I've come from different industries, different um, operations, whether it was union, non-union, um, privately owned, corporately owned, there's a lot of different opportunities in how you operate for efficiencies and effectiveness and, and just being cost aware. In the, in the city, we have budgets that are year over year. Um, they didn't have to fight like in the nonprofit world where you fight for every, you know, every week to week or month to month. Um, you can go and you can do fundraising. The city can't really do fundraising. Um, it's kind of frowned upon because we tax you, right? So we really need to be the best stewards of the money that we get and really expand on it. So when I came in, I started to, um, you know, I call it ABCs and one, two, threes. I could see a lot of deficiencies very quickly and uh, lack of separation. We have great people within our city. We have great staff. Um, it's, it's really just because of the, what I'm going to say, lack of leadership for decades. You know, when you're in a mayoral council, you go from mayor to mayor, and if the mayor isn't really focused on the inner workings, he's focused on the outer workings, that's one, one of the reasons why we went to a city administrator, is to actually have somebody that can really make the clock tell time on accurately, if that's a good way to say it. Mm -hmm. so, Ryan? Yeah, no, I think Todd, Todd hit on a lot of great points there. Um, me, I, you know, like I said, it's a month tomorrow that I'll be kind of in my role, and it's it's been very eye-opening and, and a new experience. You know, especially like what Todd said, being on the council for four years, you try to be as involved as you can, um, but it's a totally different ball game uh, when you're working in city hall full time, um, just kind of knowing the staff, um, the department heads, and how everyone operates. And I think we do have a lot of good staff here that that put in a lot of great effort to to make our community a better place. I think, you know, everyone who works at City Hall or the fire department or police department, whatever city department it is, has a, a, a public servant's heart. I think that that's that's fundamentally important and we all recognize that as well. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a millennial, obviously, and I'm the youngest mayor in, in our city's history, so I definitely have a different perspective in my, my approach in terms of how, how I view my role, um, you know, kind of taking a look yeah, it's, for example, how we structure committees, you know, making sure that everything is functioning and serving a purpose um, and not doing things how we've always done it necessarily. And I think that's something Todd and I definitely are on the same page on um, is making sure we're asking questions, taking a new fresh look, you know, questioning, oh, why have we always done it this way? You know, is there a new, new and improved way that we can do it? Is there a new innovative way that we can, you know, be more cost efficient on, on something? So, um, yeah, so I think that that's kind of been my set of so far in terms of, of how we're looking at things and how we're taking a new approach. Um, so I know that you've touched on it a little bit, Todd, um, but can you talk a little bit about the road to the um, office here and now? So what your background is and how you came to be mayor or city administrator? So it was a cold February morning in 1994. Um, <laughs> I, won't, I won't go that far. Um, so, uh, so I was born and raised in Sheboygan, um, graduated from South High School, uh, went off to college at UW Milwaukee, served in student government there. I was the student body president my junior year. And then my senior year, I became chair of UW System Student Representatives, which is the state association uh, for, for student government. Um, and did a lot of awesome policy and advocacy um, in Madison and Washington, DC, working with state legislators um, and government officials and bureaucrats just about how we can advocate and advance uh, college accessibility and college affordability. So, so that was an awesome experience. I got to travel all over Wisconsin and all over the country, uh, visiting a lot of different peers um, and, and advancing higher education. Then I graduated college, came back home, um, and then I was like, well, I wanna do my adult, you know, what's, what's my adult extracurricular gonna be? And, and I was like, well, student government, real government, that, that, that seems like a seamless transition, right? Um, so I ran for city council. I beat a 10-year incumbent when I ran for city council the first time, served on the city council for four years, worked in the nonprofit sector for my day job as a community engagement coordinator, and so, you know, saw firsthand just, you know, the operations of, of a nonprofit and what they can do and all sorts of fun things like that. And you see, see differently how, how nonprofits collaborate, how we work together through different organizations, different networks um, as well. So... Then 2020 happened. We had this COVID pandemic. Uh, Todd became the council or the city administrator. Um, then I became council president. And kind of during my time as council president, I 
I made it a goal of mine to meet with as many community leaders as I could, um, nonprofit folks, business owners, just checking in, hey, what's working, what's not? How can I be a resource for you? How can we work together? And I think there was a com common theme uh, that I've heard that, you know, hey, you know, Sheboygan is a great community. We love it here. There's a reason why we start businesses here. This is why we raise our families here. And, you know, there were just some things that people thought could be a little done done differently and kind of um, kind of some change. So uh, with some encouragement, I decided to throw my hat in the ring and um, here we are today. So um, that's kind of my short synopsis of how I landed here. Well, I don't know if I can beat that. Um, I do have a couple of years on you though, so I yeah. guess my story could be a little bit longer. <laughs> um, I'm, I consider myself the Cinderella story when it comes to uh, the management side. I literally came from the floor and worked my way up to, you know, low management, middle management, upper management to executive management. And as I had said, I've worked in family owned locally and corporate outside the state, of course, um, where I was an alder and I, I left for a bit and came back to, to the city. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, my family never moved. That's why I came back. Um, and Right before a city of uh, taking this position, I actually worked for a, another local family-owned company in, in Sheboygan Falls, uh, and I traveled all over, all over the United States, all over the world. So I can actually say as a past alder, I've actually called in for counsel from Switzerland, Germany, um, New, uh, Mexico City. I, it's quite interesting uh, sitting in, the, in a meeting at two in the morning um, <laughs> for counsel. But, the, the interesting part of it is really that the, the fact is when I first got involved, I was actually asked by a past, past mayor because of my business background, my operations background, he had asked me and said, hey, we really could use, use you on some of our committees. And that's really what started it. And as a, as a citizen, um, like any citizen, we, we don't like paying taxes, right? And we complain about the city. I mean, if we're, if we're not agreeing with what I'm saying, then we're really not listening. But, a lot of times we con we're concerned about why do we pay taxes, where does my money go, and we're either part of the problem, meaning we complain about it, or we're part of the solution where we get involved with it, find out, help it, fix it, and move on. Um, and that's really what ended up being my passion, was getting involved, finding that my skill set was needed within the city, within the committees, and I've been on committees since 2011, and then I got into running for Alder, um, and I believe my first time running was actually filling up an open position. And back then we had two alders per district and you know, 16 alders. So as I continued through this journey, it, it's, it was more of the fact that we really need somebody that has operations and business background to really help, um, as I called it before, you know, setting the, setting the clock, fixing it, you know, cleaning it, um, making sure that we're on schedule, on time, efficiently. And we're a large company and I keep referencing it as a company because we really are and we should look at it this way because we should be the gold standard of operations. We should be the employer of choice. We have over 450 employees. We have four union contracts. We have $118 million budget. That's a big company in, in any standard when you think about it. And we can easily be over 500 employees during depending on the season or voting or whatever. So we have so many what I call islands because we have different cultures, we have different operations, we have different you know, unit contracts and things like that, but we, we're all one team, we're all one um, company overall. Having said that, when um, my predecessor gave his letter of retirement to me, I was like, oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> and we interviewed, I, I can't say we, um, the mayor was part of it, I actually abstained from it because um, I was asked by multiple people if I would consider running for the city administrator because of my background. And because I have the passion for the city and I really do like challenges, um, I, I thought this would be an opportunity. So there were 26 candidates and it went from 26 and whittled down to two. And then um, I, I consider myself very fortunate uh, to be a city servant and I was chosen. So again, as the mayor had said before, one of, the, one of the mantras that I say is change is coming, but if you see something, say something. If we're doing it the same way we did it a year ago or five years ago, we're broken. Something's wrong. We've implemented a lot of technology. We're implementing a lot of policies and procedures and changes. And we're, we're doing it to, 
work smarter, not harder. So I know it's cliche, but we really are doing it every day. Well, I think that's a sentiment a lot of the uh, viewers will have as well, you know, having those things in place like your board policies and mm -hmm. um, not always the most um, thrilling conversation to have, but absolutely necessary yeah. and, um, yeah, a good, good payoff. Okay. So I guess what are you most proud of? I know you've only been here a month, but I guess in your time with the city overall, and what do you wish you could do over? Well, I'll start with what I'm most proud of. I think... You know, in terms of, of of the collaboration and community effort, I think I think that's fundamentally. I mean, it, it, it makes Sheboygan stand out. I mean, just with with the city and um, the the Economic Development Corporation and the county, um, you know, all all the partners that we have, if we all have this shared vision and want to work towards. It. So I'll kind of give the example in terms of affordable housing. Um, this has been a big topic that a lot of folks have been talking about for for several years, and we just did a comprehensive study and talking with business owners, nonprofit groups, different organizations. We really recognize what, 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 what the problem is and now we're developing plans to move forward and address it. So I think for me, it's, it's really awesome and endearing to see the collaboration and, and, and the, the effort that people put in to tackle some of these problems. Um, go, go down the list, I think. Um, that's, that's been, for me, as, as seeing, you know, being the mayor now, kind of seeing more of the, of the behind the scenes kind of day-to-day -day activities and, and how those are, are getting tackled. Um, it's, I think that, that, that's awesome. I think a lot of cities should, could learn from Sheboygan in terms of how we, how we tackle some of our issues. I guess what, one of the things that I'm most proud of, and I guess it's kind of twofold if I'm allowed that, um, really when I first came in, I did what was called a Todd on tour. And why I'm proud of that is because I literally went out to the employees, to the departments, every shift, whether it was third shift, second shift, tried to meet as many employees any, as many as of our staff as possible because they're the ones that are the foundation of what we do here. I wanted them to, to know me, understand me, um, where I'm going, where, what my thoughts, what my, my uh, just opening the communication, allowing them to understand it, not to, not to be worried about where we're going because I've been there, I've done that. Um, the city's a little bit behind and that's okay because we can learn from others by moving forward. And, you know, the second part of that is really, you know, the second part of being proud of what, what I've done is when I first came in, you know, the best time to become a city administrator is in the middle of a pandemic <laughs> during budget season. And I'm being sarcastic because you come in and you're like, you know, the sky is falling. You don't know where tomorrow is going to be. And I think that our community has done a great job weathering the storm. We're not out of it yet, but we're on the outer edge. But we had to adjust our 2020 budget. And I had to build a 2021 budget, not knowing what that future is going to be. So everybody really assisted in that because they understand why we need to do things. You know, we really try to open up that communication and allow people to better understand. I don't tell people what we need to do. I explain what we need to do to be successful. And I listen to the, to the team and I listen to what, what their concerns are. There's so many people that very easily tell me about the past, good or bad. And we need to, we need to remember the past, but focus on where we're going and, and the vision of the city. So those are the things that I'm, I'm very proud of. What would I do different? Uh, what I'm not so proud of? I think um, some of that just has to do with, again, communicating better and more clearly because there's been such a lack of communication, in my opinion, for so long. And I'm not saying years or two years or three years, but just for, it's just part of the culture here. I think we can always improve in communication because the better people understand present state and future state and why there needs to be a change and help them understand how that change is going to actually happen, we can always improve on it. So uh, I know one of the things that the city has been talking quite a bit about is how to make Sheboygan more a welcoming community and make it more inclusive and equitable. And I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about how the city is doing that. I, I think this is this is definitely a big question that, that I get asked a lot. And I think a lot of people recognize that Sheboygan is, is a, a very changed community in terms of what it was just a few years ago. Um, I grew up in the 
the Sheboyganier School District went through school here. So, I, I mean, I saw firsthand growing up how diverse our community was, just the many different cultures that we have. Um, I believe right now we have already over 40 different languages that are spoken in the school district. Um, and I think we need to embrace our diversity because it is our strength. I mean, it's, it's the fabric that is woven within our community. And I think the, the cultures and the backgrounds that we have here, I think we need to ensure that, that their voices are heard and making sure that they're, ref they're, they're represented on, you know, when the mayor makes appointments to city committees that we do with the outreach um, component as well to make sure that they're plugged in in the decision-making process. Um, you know, I, I think when you talk about diversity and equity and inclusion, I mean, it r really runs the gambit, whether it's your, your, your cultural background, whether it's um, the LGBTQ plus community, whether it's, you know, younger folks like myself um, or, or senior citizens, whoever it is, I think we need to make, we need to set the example at Sheboygan, you know, is, is a welcoming community for everybody that everyone is plugged in here. And I think it's the city's mission and, and purpose that, that we making sure that the decision that we, we're making are reflective of that as well. You know, there's, there's so much more work that we could do. Um, you know, I don't have all the answers and Todd doesn't have all the answers and nobody has all the answers right now, but we all have to do our part to make sure that we're reaching out to those groups, including them, um, making them feel part of, of Sheboygan, making sure that it's their home too. And that's a, I'm, I'm just gonna expand on it a little bit further. Um, I'm not originally homegrown, thus the mask doesn't say it. Um, I'm, I'm a trans, transplant, as I would say. I, I moved here as a disgruntled teenager um, in the 80s and it took to the 90s to get warm. And I, I can totally, uh, coming from California to, and don't hold that against me, um, I grew up and was raised in a very diverse um, culture and environment. Um, I actually got bust because uh, desegregation and making sure that things were try they were trying to equalize things as a, as a young kid. The, these are things that were just common practice, common every day. You go to school, your friends are you know, all, over, uh, all over culture and all over different types of uh, opportunities. But you can't, when I moved to Wisconsin, I, the first thing I said as a, a disgruntled teenager is, Dad, did we just go back in time? And this is before Back to the Future movie was out. <laughs> you know, it's like, did we just go back in time? And really, and I say that tongue in cheek, but it's, it's, it's so serious because it's, it, the culture here is so slow. It's so, it's, you know, it's the, a melting pot. Sheboygan, Sheboygan City and Sheboygan County is a melting pot, but they don't realize what it was like back then when people moved to Sheboygan, when Sheboygan was first founded, what different cultures and different dynamics were here. You know, you had the, the Greeks and the, the Russians and the Germans and the you know Irish and all the different the different groups, but they all lived in little clusters, right? We really need to take and expand on that, and we need to help people. It goes back to communication. We we're either successful or we fail because of communication, and we still haven't found a way to get our communities more involved with the community. You know, we've done a great job with uh, neighborhood associations. We're up to twelve now. We really need more of those because it gives us that ability to really get involved with the residents, with the neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. Back in the day when you know, I moved here, my, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, my grandmother left the doors open all the time. We were robbed as a kid. We lock our doors. You, you come to my house and I lock the door behind you. It's just habit. And it, you know, people look at me like, what are you doing? You know, it's like, no, sorry, bad habit. But we, we have such a great community and we just need to kind of go back to the way it used to be where neighbors were more involved, neighborhood associations and, and neighborhood parties and things like that. But we also need to expand as a, as a municipal government to help people understand how to get involved. So we need to have classes, not just for adults, but also you know high schoolers and grade schoolers and say, hey, this is, this is a great opportunity. This is, a, it's a company. It's kind of like having a, you know, company fair, you know, hey, what do you do? You know, we do, we do so much. You know, DPW, they open up once a year and they let everybody see the snow plows and stuff like that, but we have so much more. We do so much and people don't realize it. Okay, so um, I know you both have some nonprofit experience, Ryan, as a staff person and maybe a board member, I'm not sure. And Todd certainly has a board member. Can you talk a little bit about what that experience has um, given to you here at 
City Hall. And, you know, if there's anything that you wish you had known about the nonprofit sector back then that you know now, any advice you'd give yourself as a new board member, a new staff person? Do you want to go first? <laughs> I can go first. Okay, I'm thinking this one through. Uh, that's all right. I, that's okay. I, I can shoot from the hip. Um, the, I guess what I would, would, have, would have loved to learn a long time ago, and I, I, break, I break business into three categories. You have the, you know, the private sector, whether it's service or industry. You have the nonprofit sector. And then you have the municipal government. The, the, the nonprofit sector, I think the biggest struggle working with the actual you know, municipal government is that there's always a disconnect. We don't really understand what their needs are and their wants are, and they really don't understand what we can do to assist them. And I think that, again, I hate to keep beating up on the, on the communication piece, but they're, they're an integral part of our community. We need them. They're, they're, they're a business and we need that business to grow to help our constituents to be successful, no matter what category it is, really. So we need to better understand what their needs are so that whether it's you know, municipal or state or federal can assist them in whether it's grants or some type of assistance. And it, may, you know, it might be assistance just through giving them abilities to do certain things that helps them to be, you know, to better provide their services. It, it, it shouldn't be them against us or us against them. It should be a collaboration. You know, municipal government tends to help business, definition of business, you know. Uh, I, I tend to focus on the industry side because everybody says, oh, we, we need development. We need more businesses here. Businesses bring people. We need more people. We need to help our businesses that are here already, whether it's the service industry, restaurants, um, the guy that cuts the, cuts the grass down the street, all of the levels that are throughout the, our community. But there's a huge need for the nonprofit area in all of the services that they provide. And I, I really think that the biggest disconnect is we just don't understand what their needs and wants are and, and really what, what they provide. There's a, a lot of great nonprofits out there. And, you know, my opinion is the fact that Nonprofits are looked at as the only thing they do is ask for money. Well, you've got to look at the other side of the coin and say, what are they doing with that little bit of money? They're doing so much with so little. And that, you know, I joke because when I work with people in the nonprofit, it's like they're very creative. They're they're using, you know, they're getting 10 cents out of a nickel. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, and that's just the way they work because they've never had the resources. We all need to look at it that way, but how can we help them? to get a nickel and take it to a dime or whatever further. Yeah, definitely adding to what Todd said too. So I, I worked at a, a, an advocacy-based nonprofit and I think, um, you know, when, when you're kind of in, in the trenches, if you will, working with a certain population of the community, you can see firsthand just what the struggles are, you know, where, where the issues are, how are, they, how are they hitting home, how are they truly impacting folks that live in this community. So. Um, being involved, being on the, the the city council while working for a nonprofit, I think kind of really helped develop and shape kind of my view of how, how we need to tackle and address some of these issues in terms of some of the, the pieces of legislation that I worked on. Um, I served on, the, I was on the Maywood board um, before. I'm currently on the League of Conservation Voters of Wisconsin board right now. Now as, as mayor, I'm on the uh, Great Lakes St. Lawrence Seaway Initiative board. Um, so I think those, those, those boards right now that, that I'm, I'm involved in um, particularly give me a sense of, you know, some of the issues that are impacting our community from a different perspective as well. Um, but it also opens up new opportunities and potential, um, again, to, to collaboration and improving communication. Um, this morning, uh, you know, in terms of talking with, um, in, in terms of addressing affordable housing, me and, and, our, uh, and Chad, who's on, online I hear, I think still, um, met with uh, folks from the Housing Coalition, kind of talking about um, their point of view and their perspective of, of, of what they're seeing when it comes to affordable housing and how we move forward, getting their feedback um, so that when we're moving forward, addressing and developing a plan, we, we get that, we get their experience, we get their voice um, to, to the table as well. So, um, but again, to, to Todd's point too, being on nonprofits, like you see that, you know, you're not flushed with cash necessarily. <laughs> So you got to you got to be creative. Got to think outside the box. Got to you know find new ways to to work smarter, not harder. And 
Um, I think we're doing that as the city, especially under under Todd's leadership as the, the city administrator here. We've been um, making a lot of progress moving forward. And, um, if, you know, a lot of nonprofits in this community think we're, we're blessed to have them. And in terms of their, their longevity of, of how long they've been in this community, and, and they are truly the experts um, in their field as well. And um, I think that definitely shapes, you know, how, how Todd and I function in our in our day jobs, so. Yeah, I think Sheboygan definitely has a lot of dedicated nonprofit leaders and boards and volunteers. Um, is there anything in terms of expanding those resources or better communication that you would say or suggest or um, ways that that can be improved? Well, I guess to, you know, when we talk about expanding nonprofit, um, again, I think it, it for me, it really comes back to what, what resources do you need um, so that we as a city can kind of look at the guidelines of, of our rules and regulations. I'll give an example, uh, the American Rescue Plan. I've had a lot of emails, phone calls, and that from nonprofits amongst other, other organizations. And they've all got ideas on how to spend the money, but it, the problem is, or part of the problem is, we have to remember when we see American Rescue Plan, it's, it's federal. And anytime you say government, whether it's state or federal, we tend to lack on the details, on the, on the instructions and the guidelines. And I, I use that as an example because when we had the routes to recovery and the, the COVID Act and the, that, those monies, a lot of municipalities all over the United States and in Wisconsin, we couldn't use the money quickly because we didn't know how we could use it. The rules were so tight that as time went, the state legislature actually opened it up so we could utilize it better. So if you were trying to spend the money in the very beginning, you, you couldn't. But by the end, everybody actually found ways to spend it and utilize it to its fullest because the guidelines were changed. The American Rescue Plan is pretty much the same. Bigger numbers, but bigger numbers don't always mean that it's gonna be helpful, right? You have to be very careful. Part of the reason why um, the mayor and I are kind of pumping the brakes, as I call it, is because the state is gonna be rolling out programs and we don't know what those programs are because again, they're not telling us. So for us to roll a program out and then the state to duplicate it, that's a waste of resources for us, right? And for the state. And for the state. And, and really, we, we've struggled trying to, Abby, as you know, we've struggled trying to get money out there. So we need to really open up that communication and find out what their needs are and then match what we can do to, to achieve those needs. If we don't know what the needs are, it's kind of like going to a library and you don't really no. know what you're looking for. Is it fiction, nonfiction? You know, I don't, I don't know, I can assume, but it goes back to communication again. If we understand what your needs are, whether it's operations or you know, the PPE and you know, the different things, then we can utilize it. And I did have a nonprofit reach out to me and I said, thank you for doing this because now I can look at that need and I can keep it in the back of my head to say, okay, does this fit any, does that puzzle piece fit in our, in our puzzle? Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, you know, kind of bring another point to that too. And um, is that engagement is, is a fundamental component to, to communication. Um, one thing that I've, I've been doing as mayor so far in the first month is, is reaching out and meeting with different non nonprofit executives and leaders in this community um, that, you know, I, I've, I've engaged and had that, that, that foundational relationship with first, but kind of getting that new perspective of, of, of what issues that they're facing. Because when we're working on an issue at the city level, it's, it's important to, to get, engage with them and, and talk with them. And, and Todd's on the Habitat board. I'm surprised you didn't bring this up. Um, when you talk about like collaboration with Rock the Block, you know, a lot of our missions over, overlap when it comes to neighborhood revitalization with, with Habitat. Um, you know, when we're meeting with, I met with partners yesterday and Sarah from um, Habitat last Friday and talking about, you know, affordable housing in this community as well. Um, so, so I think components like that, when, when our, our missions overline as cities and nonprofits, I think teamwork, you know, makes, makes the dream work using the, the cliche uh, kind of slogan there. Um, so, so whether it's, you know, you're an environmental focused nonprofit, we're talking about parks or sustainability, um, you know, we want to partner with you too, but for, for nonprofit folks that are online, I would definitely encourage you to, to reach out to, you know, me, either me or Todd or, or your local alderman too. I think reaching out to the elders is, is, is important too, giving them a tour, introducing yourself if, if they're in your neighborhood, 
um, because they can be a resource if there's ever an issue in your neighborhood or your community um, that they can be, you know, partner with you and kind of have your back uh, when you're moving forward. So, um, yeah, that's what I'll add to that one. Yeah, I guess I would just say in this role as grant coordinator, it's been interesting. I had applied for federal money through the city on the nonprofit side, but actually seeing it from the other side of the mirror and just how complicated and convoluted and you know tight parameters. Um, you know, I definitely have a, a newfound appreciation for uh, municipal work and how all of that has to fit together. Um, so, well, and Abby, I just want to I'll, I'll just jump in real quickly when we talk about funding, when the COVID money was originally given out, they, we had to document it, but the documentation was actually very, very high level. It was used for this, it was used for that. When it comes to the American Rescue Plan money, because now we're talking about millions, you know you're in trouble when the federal government tells you you can use money to, put, to hire people to help keep track of the money because we're gonna be checking on it. We wanna know where you spent it, and the thing is, because we have very lack of detail on what we can spend it on, if they don't agree with it, we, the city, have to pay it back. So that, you know, we could give it out to whomever because we've, I'm sure the mayor and I have had a lot of different organizations reaching out, uh, letting us know how we can spend the money. Um, you know, because the city of Sheboygan is getting 22.8 million um, in two tracks, so it's 11.4 and 11.4. So 11.4 this month will be hitting our, our bank account per se. Um, but the thing is, if, we, if they don't like how we spent it, we've got to pay it back. So we've got communities that are saying, well, we need a fire truck. Well, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to approve that because if they don't agree with it, guess what? The city now has to go borrow money to pay for that. If I give money to a, a different organization and they say, no, that doesn't work, the organization got the money but now the city citizens have to go borrow money to pay for that disagreement in the, in the, in the process. Yeah, I think the CARES Act was approved in early April and it was, I don't know, late August, early September before we actually had guidance on how to spend it. Correct. I often joke that if it was anybody else, they'd be fired, but it's right? the federal government, so. They can do it. Yeah, they, they can probably do got it a raise. <laughs> um, okay, and then I guess before we go to some more um, questions, if anybody has one, I have one more viewer question. Um, what do you love most about Sheboygan and what do you see Sheboygan looking like a year from now and maybe five years from now? Well, Todd and I have our magic wand and we're gonna wave it and we're gonna solve all the problems. So that, that's all we have to say, right, Todd? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I think, I think what, what, what I'm most excited about of, of Sheboygan in the future is, you know, Todd, Todd and I got the energy, we got the passion to make, make our community a better place. Um, I think with 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 what we're focusing on right now um, to to move our city forward, you know, once once this pandemic's, you know, I, I feel like we're on the downswing right now, um, but I think we have a lot of exciting projects coming down the line in terms of addressing affordable housing, filling our business park, um, addressing you know our, our our water intake and some some uh, uh, wastewater projects as well um, for the betterment of the community. I, you know, I'm a nerd. I get excited about that stuff. Um, it, it's the, the stuff you don't think about every single day of what, what makes a city function, but just kind of seeing the people and the passion behind it to make my hometown a better place and everyone else's community a better place. It, it, it's exciting um, for, uh, to see in the future. So I, I'm looking forward to having more affordable housing in the future, having our roads fixed, um, more community involvement. But I mean, these aren't things that you can just flip a switch and get done at the, um, you know, with the snap of the finger. but. Um, it, it is going to take a lot of time, effort, energy from the city, from other local partners as well to, to get it done. But I'm seeing a lot of that collaboration firsthand, and I think we can make, make that happen. Just to expand on that, I, I, I totally agree with um, what the mayor had said. And I, from, my, from my point, what excites me is any, any of you that know me, um, my friends that know me, my business colleagues that know me, know that I'm a, I'm a problem solver. And... Everywhere I go, I'm very good at digging in and fixing things. And that's why I don't get nervous when we run into another, another opportunity. It's like, oh, okay, it's another opportunity. It's the same opportunity we fixed at such and such, just the names and the faces have changed, right? We, what we're going through in our development process and our cultural change process throughout the community, throughout our city and, and county is something that's happening everywhere. 
It's not new. And what excites me is we have such a great staff. And I've worked in companies where I came in and I had to fight every decision, not just with the employees, but all the way to the top. And it's like when you tell somebody what they need, it's like being a doctor and telling them, you need this medicine. It'll make you feel better. But they don't want to take it. Here at the city, it's totally opposite. Everybody is like, it's like a breath of fresh air. They, they're like, Todd, we've been saying this for years. Help us help, you know, let us help you help us kind of thing. This is what's exciting is when people want that water, want that drink, and they know they need it. They want that medicine. We've got such a great opportunity to really speed things up because they're starting to see the, the benefits. They're starting to see the momentum. And once you get that momentum, and it's always hard to get that ball moving at first, but you know, an, ob an object in motion tends to stay in motion. We just have to keep, keep it going. Mm -hmm. And when you think of it, ju not just at the city point, but our community, our community is at the same point, that tipping point, where we've got a lot of people retiring, they, they're not, you know, and we've got a lot of young people coming into the community, and we really need to start pushing that, that change. And it's, I really think that the last four to five years, we as a community have seen a lot of change. And it's going to grow. And once we get that momentum going, and because we've got a, a, a newer council, a younger council, um, and you know we've got a newer mayor, uh, we, we've got the youngest city administrator in history, right? <laughs> yeah. we, we can only move forward. And because we have that energy, the energy is really the the key to it: is making the right decisions and and just and having faith and having the knowledge to to keep it going. So. I really am excited to take this position and be in this position because I don't have the pushback that I did in other, in other companies. And it's just, it's, it's so dynamic. Everybody's excited, you know, our, our citizens, our staff, and, and our department heads know we're going in the right direction. So stepping outside of your roles as mayor and city administrator, um, Todd, I hear you love to do burpees. But what else do you like to do? What do you enjoy about living in Sheboygan? It wasn't burpees, Just, it was push-ups. Oh, push-ups. <laughs> like 180 or something I heard last. I can, I can. They're raising money for the Senior Center. <laughs> and uh, it's National Employee Health and Fitness yep. Day. Well, so, the shirt on. <laughs> yeah, Todd and some partners have some burpees and push-ups to do. But if you could talk a little bit about what you enjoy. <laughs> There's one of his partners. Um, what you enjoy about living here. How many, how many are we up to, Emily? <laughs> it's, it's that big a number? I've been paying attention from my office right next door, and I just wanted to say we're currently at $1,945. So if anyone else wants to throw a few bucks our way, <clears throat> we've got two hours and 15 minutes before Todd and Ryan, myself, and Rachel, our program coordinator, will be on the south lawn just outside doing a mix of burpees and push-ups and squats. <laughs> Fun. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Yeah, these are the things uh, that they don't tell you what being mayor all entails or city administrator, so Todd and I, you know, we'll see how this goes. I, I think I actually volunteered you. And it bounced back. Yeah, it ended up on my calendar, and I don't know. So here we are. Um, no, I, I think th there's, what was the question? Why I love it here? Well, I mean, like I said, I growing up, born and raised in Sheboygan, I think we, we take for granted how blessed we are to live in this community. You know, we live, we live on a great lake. You know, the people are just salt of the earth. They, they care about their neighbors. They, they want to make it a better place. Um, my family's here. I come from a, a, a pretty big family both from my mom and dad's side. So it's it's always fun just to kind of going home on on a Sunday night, grabbing dinner with the family and um, hanging out with friends. It's just, it's, it's that sense of community that I think is truly um, uniquely Sheboygan. Um, when I bring friends from out of town here, you know, they, they just, they're just always in awe just about, you know, some of the amenities that we have, how close of access we have to the lake and um, how it's accessible to get around. You know, we don't have to deal with getting stuck in traffic or, or different things like that. So. We're, we're, yeah, we're a mid-sized city. Um, we have a lot of the amenities bigger cities have as well, too. Um, you know, everyone says Sheboygan's such a hidden gem. Well, I'm sick of being a hidden gem. You know, I want to polish that gem off and put it on, put it out front. Um, so I think, I think we're working on that. I mean, it, it takes a lot of team effort. Um, but I, I think that's, that's something that we're, we're striving to do. And that's why I love it here. 
I can, I can say that when I, when I first moved here, I would have done anything to get back to where I came from. But as, as, you, as you grow up and you get older, you realize the, the family values, the safety, the, the, the amenities that we have. Um, I grew up in a very large city and we had a lot of, a lot of issues that Sheboygan's never had. I mean, like I said earlier, you, you know, you don't have to lock your doors per se. I, I would recommend it, but you know, people still don't because they don't have to. They they feel safe. Um, you know, people can walk around at night and not worry. We have so many things that I love, and it, we have a great school system. I I, I I have two daughters. They went to school here. Um, you know, we we have so many great things, and I've traveled all over the states and the world. And it's, I still come back here and say, we are so lucky. We have so much. Um, you know, I live by the lake. If I w lived anywhere else, it would be an, an unbelievable cost. And we have Lake Michigan and we have great businesses, family businesses that have been around for generations, helping to support our communities. We have, uh, you know, such great restaurants that we're, it's just phenomenal. You go, you, you go outside the, our area, you head down south, and I hate to say this, but their idea of a great restaurant is, you know, Olive Garden and Popeyes and Waffle House and, you know, things like that. And it's like, really? It's like, we're very, very fortunate. So I think that we have so much that we have to, you know, as the mayor said, we have to polish our gem and we need to really present what we have because people don't realize how good we've got it. And then they move away and then they come back because they're like, hey, this is great. Yeah, that would be me. Uh, you realize when you're somewhere else just how good mm -hmm. quality of life is here. Um, so we have a couple questions. Um, I'm going to ask this one first because I just uh, disappeared the chat and I have to bring it back. Uh, <laughs> if someone has a question about a component of how the city operates or feedback on something they don't like, where is the best place to submit that question or feedback if the person doesn't know what department they should reach out to? Example, last week there were a few questions about parking related things that Chad didn't have answers to because that's not really his department or area of expertise. Is there a process to ask questions, submit feedback, so it gets to the right entity within the city right away? You want me to jump on that first? Uh, I would say send everything to Todd's office. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> no, I, th I think the, 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 the best thing is, is to always contact your older person first. They're kind of the, the conduit between you and, and an issue um, in the city, but otherwise, I mean, for real though, Todd, Todd and I are, are fairly accessible. We can give my office a call and um, we can kind of plug you in with, with, with the right answer. I get, I, Abby, I guess one of the concerns I have, you know, from the question and the content of the question is the fact that we actually had a department head that didn't know where to send the information or send the question. So that tells us that we have a broken process, right? We are, we are also looking at uh, an app that we're going to be getting for the city so that our constituents actually will have a way to communicate to the city and we will have a, an opportunity to communicate to them. And that app will also allow them to get to DPW by pushing a button, get to City Hall by pushing a button. You know, we're hoping to expand it into our business district and things like that. Um, but if, and I hate to say this, and I, I do agree with Ryan, um, if, if they don't know where to go, you, you know, you can reach out to Ryan and myself and we will find out why people don't know. And again, we need to improve on our communication. There's so many things that fall into the crack where people don't really know who, who's responsible. I mean, I, when I first started here, we were, I'm sitting in a meeting and I'm like, we're talking about a great subject. And I'm like, okay, who's the owner? Who's, what's the schedule? You know, what resources do we need? There's so many things that we don't really fix when we find that there's a problem. And, since I've been here, we've been addressing these problems as quickly as we can. Now, can't address everything. We put it in what we call the parking lot, but we will find ways to communicate that better. So I would just say, uh, in defense of Chad a little bit. It's okay. Um, it wasn't so much that he didn't have uh, knowledge of who to contact. It was more he didn't want to give an answer for an area that's not his wheelhouse. Sure. Um, but I know that he did connect uh, people with the proper which is department great. head and right, right. you know had great. those conversations but um, yeah okay so the next question is when you say you want to run the city as a business could you please explain how you approach the following 
Businesses are meant to make profits, while the government is supposed to provide for all citizens for the common good. That does not always make good business sense. How do you measure value and profitability in services like the library, housing, roads? Those make our community a better place, but can't be administered like a normal business. So if it's okay, I'm gonna jump in first. Yeah. All right, so you've got a, like four questions and statements in there, so I'm gonna try to answer it as quickly as I can. When I say we, we, we need to run the business, or run the city like a business, what I mean by that is we need to be as fiscally sound and as efficient and effective on everything, every process that we do. By doing that, that allows us to, yes, have, have profit per se, but it means that that profit can be reallocated into additional um, projects, additional road construction, additional um, programs to go out to the constituents. The issue that we have is if you continue to do things the same way you've always done it and expect different results, you're not gonna get them. You, you know, I, I also use the example, if you're making soup and you use the same ingredients, it's the same soup. We have to be doing things more efficiently than anybody so that we can take these resources. Our costs go up year over year, just like every business. And if we, we don't have the income coming in year over year, like you can in, in, in the private sector. So we, year over year, should be doing things more efficiently, more effectively, so that we can take those profits, as we call them, and put them into expanding our programs. If we're, a good example is year, several years ago, we bought a paver. Why did we buy a paver? so we could actually use our, our crew to pave streets. Now they just do an overlay, but it allows us to expand on how many, how, many, how many roads or how many miles of roads we can do versus having to schedule it and pay somebody else to do it. We're actually able to, to save money and do more. So it's things like that. It's, you know, it's, it's looking at using our resources and expanding them efficiently and effectively, just like we did with the ERP system. There's so many modules that we don't use we're still doing some stuff that's literally by on paper and on Excel and AS400. These are things that nobody uses anymore. I mean, maybe the, maybe the nonprofit sector uses AS400, but. <laughs> I don't know, do people know what AS400 is? No, now Todd's getting in the weeds. But, but I wanna add, add to what Todd said too. It's, you know, we, we need to be much more strategic in terms of our long yes. range planning. And I think that's something the city that just simply did not do. You know, in the, in the past, we talk about how bad our roads are. Well, I mean, every just, single year, people just, we, there was no plan or, you know, the projects just got, you know, kicked down the road to use, use a, a fun analogy there. So now we're, we're in this terrible spot where we're trying to play catch up, you know? So it's, it's, it's you know, we just, we're wrapping up our capital improvements plan and being on the capital improvements plan commission for many years, we're seeing the change in how long-term planning is actually playing a much better role in terms of how we govern. And, and that's what folks do in the business sector and in the nonprofit sector, um, because you understand that, you know, you have to be fiscally sound with, with how you're managing your funds and how you're being effective with that. So I think that's been a positive change too that, that, that I've seen as mayor and as an alder and how we're making that transition. Well, and a good example is normally we do our CIP capital improvements planning first. So we approve how much money we're gonna spend or borrow but yet we, we haven't been looking at the financial side to say, can we afford that money? Yeah. So it's kind of like saying, hey, we're gonna do this remodeling project at, at home and approving it with your spouse. But then you find out when, when the estimates come in, well, we can't afford any of it. So we have to switch that. So we're, we're doing, as the mayor had said, we're doing more strategic planning for the next five years. We have an upcoming strategic plan for the city to get constituents and get that input to find out, are we going in the right direction? But from that, we're also gonna be doing a fiscal strategic plan so that we can see how we can take care of our roads and our facilities. And if everybody remembers from our state of the city, our number one, our largest issue that, and I broke it into four areas, our, our largest issue is roads, right? 200 plus miles. Our number three was facilities. We have huge facilities. I mean, the city hall looks great, but that was $10.5 million that we'll be paying for for a while. Our number two is our fleet. Again, one of our most costly endeavors year over year. And we've got a, a solution for that. So that takes it out of our CIP, which helps us to spend more of our borrowed money towards actual projects. And then our number one issue, which is our most important, is taking care of our employees and making sure that we have the right people with the training and the tools to be as effective as possible. 
And then another question, what role do you see the cultural organizations of our community play in advancing Sheboygan in the future? Yeah, I think um, I think they play a very important role too. Like Todd mentioned too, as, as we develop our strategic plan, we're gonna be doing a lot of outreach and engagement with with a variety of different um, different community groups and cultural organizations too, and it's 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 important for me as mayor to making sure that we're, we're plugging in with everyone, that we're elevating their voice and hearing their shared their lived their, their shared and lived experiences um, for for what unique opportunities that they face as as citizens in this community. And I think that there are a lot of folks in this community who who've simply been forgotten or ignored for too long. And I think it's time that that we engage them and plug them in with the process of our community. So I think. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of potential too. And I'd love to hear from them and um, I wanna make my best effort to reach out to folks too as we move forward with um, a lot of the planning with the strategic plan. Just to expand on this on the strategic plan, we were supposed to be doing the strategic plan this year and it was pushed off a year so that this year we could work on the internals of the city and making improvements. The other, the other reason was the fact that our strategic plan and I was involved with it back in 2017 and it was done and it was a great strategic plan being that it was our first one as a community, but it didn't have a very important piece and it was the citizens piece. And that's something that, you know, you have to be careful what you ask for. And because if you ask a question, you may not like the answer that you, that you receive, right? So sometimes, whether it's a business or a community or, or whatever, if you don't ask the question, you just make the assumption you're not wrong, right? Because you, you, made, it, you made a decision. One of the main things that we've been talking about with our, our mayor and our, our alders is that our strategic plan should be a very valuable piece and we need to spend some money. We need to do it very, very um, strategically, but we have to have 100% or as much as possible communication and participation from our constituents. The vision of the city is something that actually should be coming from our citizens. We can have input but we really need to know where do they want to go? You know, it's like asking your family, where do you want to go on vacation? They should be telling you where you want to go on vacation. And then the mission is to help us achieve that vision. And our core values are to help us achieve our, our mission. And they're all building blocks um, to get to where we want to go. But if we don't have that course heading, we'll never be able to achieve it. But if we don't ask our group where they want us to go and where the, where the deficiencies are. What are we doing right so we can do it better? And what are we doing wrong so we can stop and make that change? If we don't ask, we don't know. So again, it's, it's integral. It's, it's something that's part, it is the fabric that we need to actually be successful as a, as a city. Okay, so I know we're at just about time. Is there any other questions? Um, I will check the chat one more time. Um, if I can remember how to get back there again. Um, nothing new. Okay. So I think with that, I would just say thank you to both of you for taking the time to talk with us. Um, thanks to everybody that's uh, viewing at home or at work. And hope you found it valuable. And yes. if you have thank any other you. questions, feel free to reach out. Oh, oh. somebody? No. Okay. Uh, feel free to reach out to Todd or Ryan or myself. And thank thanks you for a lot. this opportunity. Thanks, Abby. And follow us on social media as well and City Hall Facebook page and Twitter and Nextdoor and all those fun social media websites. So thanks, everyone. Yep, thanks, everyone.